came to his own and his own received him not. The way, the truth, the life, the only begotten Son of God, he came to his own and his own received him not. He fed the multitude and showed God's love to man. He healed the sick and made the lame to walk again. Believe on him, he died for your sins, my friend. Eternal life and peace, forgiveness for your sins. the day turned to night tore his clothes gambled for his robe one said this ain't right destroy this temple on the third day I'll rise he said and on the third day he rose up from the dead he's coming in going in glory and power to reign his enemies will know their tongues for pain trust him now and flee from the wrath to come Accept him as your Savior, and he will take you home. Accept him as your Savior, and heaven is your home. The Apostasy of the Ages, Romans chapter 11, and verse number 32. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Now, on our chart here, we have seven ages as uh, listed on a chart, and uh, these seven ages make up the time in which God deals with mankind. In other words, from eternity to eternity, in this segment that we call time, there are seven dispensations or seven periods of time. I have them listed up here, innocence, conscience, government, patriarchs, law, grace, and kingdom. Now these seven periods of time cover all of God's dealings with mankind. And outside these uh, periods of time, I do not believe you have anything at all that is known as history as such. Instead, uh, from before this, there's eternity, and after it, it is eternity. There's no time. So what we're doing here is we're showing how God's dealings with mankind, ha what happens during time itself, and it's made up of seven divisions. Now, I believe that God does things by sevens, and it's not an accident that you find seven again and again in the Bible in dealing with the uh, uh, things of God. For example, uh, the Lord created the heaven and earth in six days and rested the seventh. And whenever God deals with Israel, God deals with Israel on a number seven basis. God gave to Israel seven feasts, seven special feasts. The Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles. Those are seven special feasts that God gave to Israel. And the Lord deals with Israel in sevens. Uh, well, the 70 weeks of the nation of Israel is a multiple of a seven. So anytime God is going to deal with uh, Mankind, or even the Word of God. The Word of God itself is a book, the Bible says, that it's been tried seven times. Seven times. The Bible refers to itself as being a seven-sealed book. The creation was made six days, God rested the seventh. And we've got this very basic uh, framework in all of our time that we count. Uh, did you know that all people everywhere count the time? It goes one, two, three, four, five, six days, and then the seventh day, and then you've got not the eighth day, but you've got another one again, and you start off with another division of seven. And so that time itself divided into weeks. Well, I believe this seven you'll find carries all the way through over into all of time so that you've got seven divisions of time. Now, there's something that the Lord states here in Romans 11 and verse 32, which is true of each one of these divisions. It's true of not only the parts of the whole up here, but it's true of everything from the beginning of time to the end of time. 
It's true from the beginning of this period of time to the end of this time, innocence. It's true at the beginning of the age of conscience all the way to the end. It's true at the end of this. It's also true from the beginning of time to the end of time. So that uh, in Romans 11:32 it said, For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. So that the conclusion of God dealing with all men in any age or in all the ages, the conclusion of that is unbelief. They're concluded all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. So that whenever you look at man down through time, man does not deserve actually anything he gets. Instead, he deserves hell. But God in his mercy allows man a way of escape. And regardless of the period in which the man lives, regardless of the time in which man lives, if he's in the law period, God offers him a way by mercy. God offers him an escape out of sin and out of degradation and out of wickedness. God offers himself, that, that sinner, an escape to himself. In the age of grace, God does the same thing. In the age of the kingdom, God does the same thing. Now, I believe, although I don't have it noted up here as such, I believe personally that not only do you have at the beginning of time the apostasy and so on at the end of it, at the beginning of the age of innocence you have apostasy at the end of it, the beginning of the age of conscience you have blessing and then apostasy, blessing and then apostasy, government and so on. I believe that it gets successively worse as you go. I believe if we were really going to show, if we, we could have done it this way, I could have put it like on stair steps and I could start it out with innocence here and just move down a step, conscience, move down another step to government, down another step, patriarchs, law, grace, kingdom, and so on, and so that it moves right down into hell itself. I believe that each one of these ages, as you go, man demonstrates his unbelief to a greater degree than in the previous age. I believe it gets worse. I don't believe it's getting better. I don't believe we're going up the stairs. I believe we're going like on a slide right straight down into hell and that all nations will be cast into hell along with them that forget God. So that the man's history is actually devolution.